The sun is basically a huge flaming ball of gas. It's hot enough to shine as bright as it does during the day, and it provides lots of energy to power the Earth's ecosystems. Thanks to sunlight, plants can make food, and we can extract energy through solar panels. But that's not all the sun is capable of. The sun can also produce something called the solar winds. As it travels away from the sun, the winds should lose heat. But the surprising thing is, it doesn't. In fact, when the solar winds reach Earth, they're much hotter than they should be. Why does this happen? Let's look at the science and find out. What are solar winds? Is it windy in the sun? How can there be winds in space? Let's find out. Our sun is made up of millions of highly energetic particles owing to its immense temperatures. At the upper atmosphere of the sun, a region called the corona, temperatures can reach more than 1 million degrees Celsius. With particles in the corona having that much energy, the sun's gravity doesn't have enough force to keep those particles in. So many of those particles fly out of the sun. This is what causes the so-called solar wind. These particles travel really fast and can go really far. Near the corona, the solar wind reaches speeds of up to 800 kilometers per second. As they stream farther away from the sun, the wind slows down. Once it reaches Earth at the equator, the solar wind travels at just 300 kilometers per second. That's still really fast, though. At that speed, you can go from New York City to Washington, D.C. in a little more than a second. The solar wind can go even farther than just Earth. In fact, the New Horizons space probe found traces of the solar wind as far as Pluto when it flew by the planet. So, to answer the question from earlier, there technically isn't any wind in the sun. Instead, what it has is a constant stream of particles flying out of its surface. These particles have lots of energy and travel at high speed, making them seem like wind. And because they have lots of energy, they travel across the solar system at extra high temperatures. How hot is the solar wind? At the corona, the solar wind reaches temperatures of 800,000 degrees Celsius, like we mentioned. To put that into perspective, the melting point of a diamond, the hardest material on Earth, is about 4,000 degrees Celsius. That means the solar wind at the corona is 200 times hotter than the amount of heat required to melt diamonds. Anything that touches the solar wind at that point would be vaporized in an instant. As the super-hot particles flow through space, they move away from their source of heat. So, logically, the particles should cool down as they move farther and farther away from the sun. But new research suggests something different. Satellite measurements of solar wind temperatures tell a rather confusing story. Instead of cooling down rapidly, as many scientific models predict, the data shows that solar winds hitting Earth are actually 10 times hotter than expected. How is that even possible? According to physicist Stas Boldarev of the University of Wisconsin at Madison, there is something unexpected going on near the surface of the sun where the particles of the solar wind fly out into space. Specifically, there's a sea of electrons trapped near the sun which provides extra energy to the escaping particles. Particle ping pong. In a game of table tennis, two opposing players take turn paddling a ball, which bounces back and forth across the table. According to Boldarev's research, a similar thing happens in the sun. The solar winds are composed of charged particles, including electrons and ions. The electrons have negative charges, while the ions have positive charges. Electrons are lighter than positive ions, so they can move faster than the ions. But as the electrons move farther away, they also get attracted to the positively charged ions left behind. Eventually, this attractive electric force overcomes inertia, so the electrons get pulled back in. Then they collide with other particles flying out of the sun, which gives those particles extra energy. With millions of particles moving around this way, a lot of extra energy gets transferred. This constant ping-pong of particles is where the solar wind gets its extra heat, and that's why it can become 10 times hotter when it reaches Earth. 
Now that we know why, let's explore the different effects of the solar wind once it hits our home planet. What happens when the solar wind hits Earth? As the solar wind travels across the solar system, it carries countless charged and high-energy particles along with it. These particles also possess magnetic fields, which gives them some interesting properties when they reach our planet. One such effect can be observed in the night sky. These are called the Aurora Borealis, or the Northern Lights, and the Aurora Australis, the Southern Lights. These colorful displays of light are generated when the charged particles from the solar wind interact with the Earth's own magnetic field. Speaking of which, the Earth's magnetic field does a lot in keeping these solar winds in their place. Without the magnetic field, radiation from the sun's high-energy particles would enter the Earth and destroy all life on the planet. But thanks to the planet's magnetic field, we have a shield against the devastating effects of the solar wind. As the powerful charged particles bombard the planet, the Earth's magnetic field changes shape slightly. On the side facing the sun, the field pushes inward, while on the side away from the sun, the field pushes outward. But that's enough to direct the charged particles away from the Earth's surface. That way, we don't get cooked alive by the energetic solar winds. Effects on Satellites we who are on Earth are spared from the powerful effects of the solar wind. But the objects we send to space, like satellites, are not so lucky. The solar winds can reach those satellites, and the magnetic fields present in the solar particles can wreak havoc on them. Take a look at what happens to GPS satellites when solar winds blow through them. Normally, GPS satellites allow us to track our locations in real time and with pinpoint accuracy. These days, we can't imagine life without the location services on our phones. We use it not just to find out where we are on the map. We use it to buy stuff, too, and have them delivered to our door. We use it to hail cabs and tell them where we need to go. We even use it to locate our lost phones. Now, imagine when solar winds hit these GPS satellites. That pinpoint accuracy would be gone. GPS readings would be off by dozens of feet. If a satellite is badly hit, those location pins could even be off by miles. That, or it could disable the satellite entirely. And it's not only GPS satellites which are vulnerable. Weather satellites, communication satellites, and many others can also be affected. Trouble down below. Not only that, but the solar winds could also spell trouble for a few things on the Earth's surface. When solar winds become particularly powerful, power grids and electronics become especially vulnerable. Each time the sun reaches a period that astronomers call the solar maximum, solar winds become a lot more powerful, ejecting even more particles into space in an event called a coronal mass ejection, or CME. During a CME, billions of tons of charged particles fly off the sun, and they can reach Earth in a few days. These particles interact with Earth's magnetic field, producing particularly bright displays of aurora in the night sky. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Particles launched by a CME also cause a weather event called a geomagnetic storm. One effect of this is a disturbance of Earth's ionosphere, which is a layer of the atmosphere that interacts with radio signals. In turn, communication systems would experience a lot of interference. Also, the interaction of solar-charged particles with the Earth's magnetic field can induce electric currents that may damage power grids and other electrical systems. The good news is that geomagnetic storms rarely happen. Scientists from NASA and the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration have ways to predict when the next one will occur, so we can prepare ourselves long before it hits. Hopefully in the future, we can harness the power of solar winds to produce energy. Those high energy particles could be put to good use, but until then, we just have to leave the solar wind where it belongs, out there in space.